Let's work on this new example. So gallium triiodine. Right. Stick with the rules. First thing, count the valence electrons. Gallium. We don't see gallium all that much. Let's take a look at it, see where it is on the periodic table. Even though we've probably never mentioned gallium in the entire class. Oh, we know what it does chemically. Okay. It's in this well, third family, if you will, with the, if you just look at the representative block. It's just like it's similar to aluminum, similar to bromine. So what we need to realize is that it has three valence electrons it's going to use for bonding. And then the uh, iodine is here, and it has a valence electron count of seven. Let's apply that. So I got one gallium, got three um, valence electrons. Each iodine has seven. There are three, so this is 24. 24 valence electrons. Okay, gallium is the first single atom. That's the one that's going to be in the middle. Let's do that. And then I'll place the iodine just sort of symmetrically around the structure. The first thing I want to do with the valence electrons is connect everything together. And this I've used, you know, use six valence electrons, right? Two, four, six. So what I have, uh, 18 left. Now, remember, these are going to be used for either lone pair electrons or double bonds or triple bonds, you know, multiple bonds. Now, with respect to octet rule, gallium iodine, you know, these elements are not on the periodic table here. What you have to realize is that um, you can use the periodic trends to know what the basic octet rules are for all the other elements. So what I mean by that is that, and we just saw this a second ago, gallium, which family is it in? Is it in? It's in where boron and aluminum, so it's in that family. What do boron and aluminum like to do? Either six or eight electrons. Okay, so notice with gallium, two, four, six, it actually already has its octet. So that suggests that I'm not going to change anything around that central atom. All the remaining electrons are going to go on the iodine. What will iodine do? Well, it is in the halogen family. So it's going to behave in a similar fashion as fluorine. So the first thing is we just go, go on the assumption since iodine and fluorine are both halogens and fluorine likes to have eight electrons, then that suggests that iodine is going to have eight electrons. How do I do that? Well, I'm pairing up electrons all the time. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, or three lone pair electrons on the iodine. So there's six here, two more, eight. What if I do that for all of the iodines? If I do that for all the iodines, well, I've used up all of my valence electrons. There are eight valence electrons around the iodine. That stands for its octet, basically. So it is, you know, it's following the octet rule. Uh, and then 8 times 3, well, that's equal to 24. So that's the total number of uh, valence electrons that I have on the structure. I always want to, especially early on, I want to go ahead and I want to check my, my formal charge calculation because these are a little bit different. We haven't seen gallium. We haven't played with iodine yet. Let's just run through that real quick. Formal charge calculation. Valence electron count, well, we already saw that, 7 for each iodine. There's one bond, and there are six lone electrons. That's zero. So if this iodine has a formal charge of zero, then the other two iodines have a formal charge of zero because they are bonded in the same fashion. Right? One single bond, and then three pairs of lone electrons. The gallium, what do we have for gallium? Well, its valence electron count was three, right? right there. And then it's one, two, three bonds, right? That's all I'm doing. I'm following this pattern here. No lone electron pairs around it. It has a formal charge of zero. Zero plus zeros equals zero, the formal charge, right? 
formal, sum of the formal charges for all of the elements in the molecule need to add up to the overall uh, formal charge for the molecule itself. That's it. Thanks.